Piers Bryson. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen of the press of Hong Kong. It's good to be back here. What is the essence of James Bond? Cruelty. Look, martinis. Sex is weapon. Because the man deals with killing, you know, and he has this license to kill. There is a, you know, that dark side to it. Not that I want to make it that, it's just that when you have elements of it within the movie, it just, it makes him bigger. It makes him more of the hero, and it makes him more accessible to the audience out there. They can identify with him, that there is this beating heart in there. And then you have all the, you know, the wit and the charm and the throwaway one-liners. I have to get it back, or somebody's gonna have my ass. First things first. It is formulaic, which is its strong point, but I also think it has a weakness. I mean, I would love to see one to take the formula away, to give the illusion of, of it at the beginning, but then to surprise. And that's one of the, if you can surprise and have growth, then you have interest. We've hit a, we've hit a very strong note to go out of the 90s and this century on. Uh, having started this project five years ago and sat in a conference which was 20 times bigger than this in England, in London, with cynics and skeptics who thought there was no room on the stage and it was dead and dusted and over to this wonderful time right now at this movie, that, which has been such a lovely success. There is obviously a, a desire and a want and an audience out there who, for one reason or another, they just love this movie for all its kind of campness or its familiarity or its formula or... It's just a good night out of the cinema. People seem to like it. They just like that they know what they're gonna get. They're gonna get the opening sequence, they're gonna get the great stunt. You know, Bond gets his leg over and that's it. I had a great director in Michael Apted. Michael and I had a wonderful rapport with each other. And we sat and we talked a number of times before the making of this film about likes, dislikes, what I wanted to do, what I didn't want to do, and really about character and story. So consequently, what we have is a film which I think it has character and style and wit and charm. Golden Eye to this. That's a good progression, good growth of character and confidence and assuredness, of which I had, not every day, but one strives for it. The fireball sequence going down the tunnel, that was fairly dramatic and gave me pause for concern as I was hanging on the wires. And I said, let me just look at the playback on the fireball tests, uh, which they did with the stunt guy. And I went over to the monitor, got off the harness, checked out the monitor and saw the test of the guy going down. And as he got to the very end of the run, flames just caught the back of his neck, his hair caught on fire. So I wish I hadn't done that. That was a bad idea. I have the option of a fourth, and I would like to exercise that option. I and mean, we've talked about it now. I don't know if Barbara and Michael Wilson, they would like to go out maybe another three years. And I'm of the same opinion, because I've just worked back to back since Bond has been in my life. I'd like to have time for recovery. Uh, beginning of next year, and then make a couple of my own films. I've just had a blast doing this role. Uh, I have no complaints. This is like act three. Act one was Goldeneye. Tomorrow Never Dies, act two. Act three is this, so it's, it's, I'm, I'm very happy. Um, but I do know we can push it further. This man is fallible. This man has feelings. He has doubts. 
and there's moral ambiguity there. And I think when you go into the gray area of any character, that's when you get interesting drama. It's, it's in the books. The world is not enough. Foolish sentiment. Family motto. Fleming does make this character fractured. Gold and I was, I was cautious. It was my first time and I didn't want to blow it. So, and when you're cautious, you're not as free with your performance and, and, and your knowledge of the character because you censor yourself. But I got away with it. We have a strong cast in this. Don't go. Stay with me. I think Sophie Marceau is exquisite. She is uh, a seasoned actress, and I think she um, brought a lot to the table. It was easy to fall in love with her. It was easy to kind of, it was easy to work with her. Are you here for a reason? Or are you just hoping for a glimmer? Denise. This is a young woman who's just starting out her career. She had all the, the humor of being in a Bond movie and playing a nuclear physicist, running around in hot pants and <laughs> spouting a lot of gobbledygook jargon. It's a tactical fission device. Low yield. Hold me steady. I would say to her, I said, what did you just say? Do you understand what you're saying? No, <laughs> but it didn't matter. It's a Bond movie. And I think, uh, you know, it's... I, I thought she was brilliant. I think she's a, I think she's a really fine young actress and uh, she's got a good sense of who she is and style about her. Those who may not get her performance are missing the mark. Would you like to check my figures? Maria. Maria Grazzi. Now there's a woman. That's a lot of women. She was wonderful. Again, she's somebody who, she wanted to do this role. She just, she said, I don't care. I just want to be in a Bond movie. And um, I think Michael Apted had a very fine time casting this. He certainly didn't call me up to invite me in. You can't kill me. I'm already dead. I mean, he's such a fine actor. And that's, that was the strength of this as well. When you have an actor like that, then you have a performance. And if you have a script which is supportive of you, and I think this one was, then you then you have uh, you have performance you have drama you have conflict he and i got on really well together good man lose the girls valentine we need to talk why am i suddenly worried that i'm not getting enough insurance robbie's character is wonderful i'm not sure if he's really dead it would be nice if he kind of uh, rose from his deathbed. Um, anything's possible in a Bond movie, but certainly working with him again and having that kind of Sydney Green Street type character adds great color and dimension. Can't you just say hello like a normal person? The women in Bond movies, they gotta be sexy, they gotta be beautiful, they gotta have a sense of who they are. And when you get the really good ones, they're played by actresses who are right on, you know, right on the money with, with their own sensuality and sexuality, and they play it to the hilt. And they play it with a wiggle. So they're not gonna go away. Otherwise, we wouldn't have a Bond movie. That would be very sad. Bond without babes? Oh. <laughs> But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you.